The death toll from the worst Ebola outbreak the world has ever known grew today to at least 887 in the African nations of Guinea, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Nigeria. U.S. officials are downplaying the threat here in the United States, but delegates to the Africa Summit in Washington arriving from at-risk countries are being screened at the airport. The World Bank announced this afternoon that as much as $200 million in aid will be provided to the affected countries. An American missionary who was infected in Liberia is being treated tonight in Atlanta and another is due there tomorrow. Here's Dr. John LaPook. Today, the NIH revealed that Dr. Kent Brantley and Nancy Reitbull received an experimental serum called ZMAP, previously only tested in monkeys. They both received the serum in Liberia before Brantley was flown to Atlanta in a specially equipped plane. The serum contains antibodies that prevent the virus from entering cells in the body. Dr. Bruce Ribner heads the medical team treating Brantley. Unfortunately, by the time we used the serum, most of the virus is already inside the cells of the patient. And so we have to prevent new infection, but the old infection just has to run its course. If Dr. Brantley is improving, it's unclear whether that's from the serum, his own body fighting the infection, or a combination. How do you support them if there's no specific treatment against the virus? If they develop kidney failure, we give them dialysis. If they develop lung failure, we put them on respirators. Uh, we just address each complication as it occurs until the patient is able to mount their own body's defense against the virus. In Lagos, Nigeria, three new Ebola cases were reported. It's a city of 21 million. Dr. Stephen Monroe is a deputy director at the CDC. Would you be surprised if a case of Ebola turned up in the United States from a traveler coming in? Given the amount of travel, it wouldn't be entirely surprising if there would be a case that would show up here in the U.S. We know that when those cases are identified in the U.S. healthcare system, they can quickly be put into isolation and appropriate uh, procedures in place to prevent the spread either in the healthcare setting or in the community. And Scott, we learned late this afternoon that a man who had recently traveled in West Africa came into the Mount Sinai Hospital emergency room in New York City complaining of fever and gastrointestinal sy symptoms, raising the possibility of Ebola. He was immediately put into isolation, strict precautions were taken, and testing has been sent out. John, how many calls is the CDC receiving from doctors all around the country who might be concerned that they have an Ebola case? Well, the CDC told me that they've only gotten about 20 of these calls from health professionals around the country. They're taking fewer than 10 of them seriously. One of those is the patient who I just told you about at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. And normally the testing, when it's sent to the CDC, takes about one day for the CDC to turn that around. Dr. John LaPook at the CDC in Atlanta. John, thank you very much.